Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine if you have one, none, or two triangles for your ambiguous case when you're dealing with finding the missing parts of a triangle for oblique triangles. Now we have the ambiguous case whenever we have triangles that are going to be at side side angle. That means we're given two sides and one angle and kind of in that kind of form. So you can see here, you know, if we were going to give in values for this one triangle, we had a side side angle. All right. So whenever you notice you have to solve for the missing parts of a triangle and you see side side angle, you know it's going to be your ambiguous case. There's three different ways to do this, or three different um, options or solutions that you could have. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you kind of the quick and easy way uh, to be able to determine that, and then also a way that works no matter what, um, but it just requires a little bit more work than what we're gonna do here. But to understand what I kind of wrote up these rules, you really need to understand where does H come from. Well, H, if we were to kind of create a perpendicular bisector here, and create a right triangle, you can see that h, which would represent the height here, is going to um, takes on equals b times the sine of a. And that's because you can write the sine of a, this angle right here, is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, where b would be your hypotenuse. Well, if you multiply by b on both sides, you can see that that is equal to h. OK? So h represents the height. Now, if we can figure out the height for each one of these problems, as long as all we need to do is just compare what the height is compared to the value of a. And by doing that, we can determine if there's going to be one, two, or no triangles. Now, I did kind of give you a little bit of hint. I did already tell you what the answers are going to be. So that should, be, that should make that at least easy enough. But let's still practice and kind of see how this works. So our first example, we have one triangle. So if I was going to go ahead and plug this in, um, first thing I'd want to do is calculate what is um, h. So we know, so in this case, in all these problems, I give you my a, I give you um, your a as your length and your a as your angle. However, just please note that you know I could have changed this to be, oops, that should be a, right? I think that wasn't my problem. Don't want to make sure I'm confusing 95. Yeah, that should have been an A. My apologies. But please note, I could have rewrite this. I could have rewritten this as C and C, right? But you'd still use whatever. When we're referring to A, what we're referring to is the side length and the angle that um, are your only ratio, or is the only one that we have a ratio of. Because when you have side side angle, you only have one side and one angle that you can create a ratio for. So in our examples, we use A. And for the examples of my problems, I only used A and A. But in reality, this could be swapped with C and C, right? And it doesn't really matter. You just, that's the one, you're, those are the lengths that you're still going to compare. However, to make it easy, that's why I did it this way. So the first thing we're going to do is identify our H and see what our value for H is. So h in this case is simply going to be my b value, which is going to be 40, and then times the sine of 40. Again, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode when you're calculating this. So therefore, I have 40 times the sine of 40. And when I, by rounding that, I get 25.711, uh, or 71 when I round it to the hundreds. As you can know, my value h is going to be greater than twenty. Oh, I wrote that wrong. That's supposed to be 15. I'm an idiot. I took this from another problem. No wonder. Oops. All right, let's just double check I wrote down these problems again, right? So I have 20, 15, and 40. Good. All right, so let's write that again. I'm sorry about that. So I have 20 times the sine of 15, and that's 10.35. Good. So 10.35. So you can see that the, my value of h right, is less than a. So if it was, as long as it's less than or equal to a, it's only going to create one triangle. So therefore, I can verify that this creates one triangle. Over here, I'm going to value for my h. Now before I do this, I'm just going to make sure I wrote down the problem correct. So I have 10. 40 and 30, very good. OK, good. Now this one works again. So in this case, um, again, my A and my A is going to represent it. This will represent my B. So now I'll do 40 times the sine of 30 degrees. So I do 40 times the sine of 30 degrees, and I get 20. 
So obviously, you can see now my h is going to be greater than a. So therefore, this produces no triangle. And then over here, um, all I simply need for my h here is um, it needs to be greater than, it needs to be less than my a, like in my first example. But instead of it being greater than b, oops, which I didn't show, um, and then a is greater than b. So my a is greater than my b. Here, you can see that my a is less than my b. Um, but therefore, let's just prove that it's going to be less. So therefore, I'll take b. So it'll be 125 times the sine of 49. So 125 times the sine of 49. And that gives me 94.34. So that equals 94.34. Or approximate. And you can see that my value, um, my h, is going to be less than my a. So therefore, this produces two triangles. So this is a quick and easy way to kind of determine them. Just based on these formulas, you can quickly kind of do this. But this doesn't really also explain, you know, well, how does this really work in the real, in the real sense, right? How do, how do I really know, um, you know what this makes up? Because I'm always used to kind of drawing triangles. So the best way I like to do this, um, and especially also remembering all these formulas, if, that's, if you understand that and that works for you, perfect. Use this. Write this down. However, when it comes to a test, I prefer to kind of assume that, it's a, that it creates one triangle and then kind of adjust based on the law of signs. And let me show you. If I was given a problem like this, all I would immediately do, and what I tell my students, is to draw a triangle. Who cares if it's the right type of triangle? Who cares if it's the right dimensions? I would just graph my triangle, and I would start labeling A, B, and C. Okay, And I'd just label all my side lengths just like this just to start getting everything done, A, B, and C. And I know this does take a little bit more time. But again, if I'm asking to solve for the problem, well, then I've already created some of the work here. I'm not, I'm not limiting myself to just doing this. And then because here, oh, it's two triangles. Great. But now you still have to solve for the two triangles if that's what the question was asking. At least here, I've already done some kind of groundwork. So in this case, for instance, they give us A, which is 40 degrees. And they give us A, which is 20. And they give us B, which is 15. Well, I can create, using my law of signs, I can create this to solve. So therefore, uh, I'll do 20 over the sine of 40 degrees equals B over the sine of B. Right? Oops, B is 15. So now, to go ahead and solve for B, I'll do the first one long. And then from now on, I'm just going sh to show this uh, quickly. So the first one, you multiply by sine of b on both sides. Then you have sine of b times, um, times the fraction 20 over sine of 40 equals 15. To undo 20 over the sine of 40, I would multiply by the reciprocal. So the sine of 40 degrees over 20 on both sides. Therefore, those would divide out. Now you're left with the sine of b equals 15 times the sine of 40 degrees all over 20 degrees. Now to find b, I basically need to figure out what this value represents and then take the inverse of it. So to do that, I'll simply take 15 times the sine of 40. And then I'll divide that by, is it 20? Yeah, I divide it by not 20 degrees, just 20 divided by 20. And I get 0.48. So I have sine of b equals 0.48 um, 20 whatever blah 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 907073. Now usually you don't really need to write these out because I'm going to when I'm going to find b, I'm going to use the inverse sign and I'm going to use inverse sign of second answer. So I'm going to use the whole answer in your calculator. Um, and I'd recommend doing that. You don't ever want to round until you're at the very, very end. So I'll do Sue's inverse, uh, inverse sine of second answer. And I get 28.28. Now here I'm going to have to uh, round, and I'll round to the hundredths for this problem. So I have 28.82. So I have 28 degrees, 0.82. That's going to be my angle now for B. Let's use red. So I have 28. 0.82. Now, what we're going to do to determine if it's one triangle or two triangles, what you could do is 
Now go ahead and subtract that value from 180 and see if you could use that other angle because um, both of those angles, the angle in the first quadrant as well as the angle in the second quadrant, the sine value is going to be exactly the same. So if I did 180, 180 minus my angle, I would have 151 degrees. So I could call that B prime. So 180 minus 28.82 is equal to 151.7, oh, 151.18, 18. Okay. So that equals 18 degrees. Well, the problem with me using B prime is if I plug in 151.18 in for this angle, 151.18 plus 40 is over you know 190.118. So therefore, B prime cannot exist. Therefore, I can only use the angle B, and that is it. In my next example, over here, again, just use your law of sines. Again, I know what A is. In this case, A is 30 degrees. My A here is equal to 10, and my B is equal to 40. So again, I just create another, um, again, I just create another uh, ratio. So I have 10 over the sine of 30 degrees equals 40 over the sine of B. Now in this case, again, we want to solve. So I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. So I can say sine of B is going to equal 40 times the sine of 30 degrees divided by 10. So now to kind of move some steps along here, actually, let, let's write this out so therefore you guys can see this. So I'll write this as sine of B. OK, so now I do 40 times the sine of 30. So I do 40 times the sine of 30. And that equals 20 divided by 10. And that equals 2. So I have sine B is equal to 2. Now, hopefully, if you understand sine as well as sine inverse, you realize that the domain of sine inverse is only between negative 1 and 1. So therefore, I can't, there is no angle that's going to be between um, that I'm going to be able to evaluate for the sine inverse of because this is not within my domain. And I can verify that when I take sine inverse of 2, my calculator says um, value not entered is not allowed in the function or commands. So therefore, it's an error because of the domain. So therefore, since I can't even figure out the angle for b, I can realize that this is no triangle. Okay, And getting into our last one here again, uh, just plug in, if when you plug in your values, you have 49 degrees, B is 125, A is equal to 95. All right, so again, realizing this, I can quickly um, create my, I can quickly create a system or a using my law of signs, so I can say 95 degrees, I'm sorry, not 95 degrees, 95 over the sine of 49 degrees is equal to 125 over the sine of b. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you know these a, b, and c, they're all just interchangeable. Does, I'm only using a and b in this problem, really mainly because of this, because I wanted to teach it. But it really doesn't matter if it was a, b, or c, or whatever it may be. So now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and kind of speed this along real quick. And I'm just going to solve for b. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to uh, sign for, I know that sine of b is basically by solving this is going to be 125 times the sine of 49. And this is just like this problem right over here. So I'm going to have uh, 125 times the sine of 49, basically kind of cross multiplying, divided by 95. So I'm basically using my cross multiplication. Then I have sine of b is equal to this answer. To find the angle, I'm going to do the inverse sine of that answer. And I get 83.24. So the work, all the work that I just did here is exactly what I did over here. But rather than working it out like I did, since I've already shown that, I'm just, I just did it much quicker in this case. But again, all I simply did is just did cross multiplication, found, got my decimal, and then did inverse sine to find my angle. Now, again, I want to determine, so I have a value. So it either could be one triangle or two triangles. Again, to determine if this works, I'm going to look for b prime. So I'm going to do 180 degrees minus 83.2. To four degrees, and again, the reason why this works, if you look at it, if you look at a an angle that's in the first quadrant, the sine of the angle in the first quadrant is equivalent to that exact same angle in the second quadrant, which is basically the acute angle, or you can look at the obtuse angle. So it doesn't matter if the angle, or even look at the unit circle, when you have angle with the same sine is in the first and the second quadrant. So we got to check the acute as well as the obtuse angle. So if I did 180 uh, minus 
83.24, that's going to give me 96.97. So B prime is 96.97 degrees. All right. Now, if you look at this, is it possible for B to be 83.24? Yes. Is it possible for B prime to be 96.97? Yes, because either of those angles, when you add them up to 49, there's still room for us to find an angle for C. So therefore, in this case, since I can subtract, since I can use both B or B prime, this would be two triangles. Whereas this angle, whereas this triangle, I couldn't even evaluate for sine or inverse sine. I couldn't even get an angle, so therefore it's no triangle. And this one, when I subtracted from 180, my angle was so large, I couldn't put it in my triangle to act, I couldn't, it had, the angles were too large to even make up a triangle. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine um, when, using your ambiguous case, if you have one, two, or no triangles. Thanks.